So in today's video, we're going to master the Hardy-Weinberg principle. P plus Q equals one, and P squared plus two PQ plus Q squared also equals one. Now I'm gonna show you exactly how to use those equations and the conditions that must be met for Hardy-Weinberg to remain true. Stay tuned guys, this is gonna be a good one. So let's talk about the Hardy-Weinberg principle. So the best way to go through this is first of all to introduce the two key equations that you need to know in order to be able to calculate Hardy-Weinberg successfully. So first of all, we've got P squared, which we've got here, plus 2PQ, plus Q squared equals 1. Okay? Now use this when you're given information about the phenotypes and the genotypes. So what I want you to think of is P squared is the dominant genotype. 2PQ is the heterozygous genotype. And Q squared is the homozygous genotype. Now, if we move on, we've got P plus Q equals 1. So P plus Q equals 1. Now, use this when you're given information about allele frequency. Now, think of P as the dominant allele, and think of Q as the recessive allele. So if, for example, we were looking for whether P's were round or wrinkly, and let's imagine we had big R was round. So I've got big R is round there. And we had little r was the recessive allele, which would be wrinkly. Now, let's have a think about what P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared would mean. So P squared would basically mean big R, big R. It'd be the genotype that has the dominant characteristic expressed as the phenotype in the homozygous condition. 2PQ would be big R, little r, because it's heterozygous. It would still express the phenotype of round P's, but it would be heterozygous for the alleles. So that's why we've got the P and the Q. Now Q squared would be homozygous, which would be little r, little r. So that's what we're thinking about with the top equation. Now below it, P would just be all of the capital R's, all of the dominant alleles in the population at that present time. And Q would be all of the recessive alleles in that population at that given time. So what does the Hardy-Weinberg principle actually predict then? And what are the conditions required for the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium to remain true? Well, the Hardy-Weinberg principle states that the frequencies of alleles in a population remain constant over time, so long as five key conditions about the population are met. The first one is that there's no mutations, so no mutations. So that means no new alleles will be created. The next one is no immigration or emigration. So individuals are not exiting the population or being introduced to the population, having different alleles being introduced or lost. The next one is that there's no selection, so no alleles have undue selection pressures on them. Next of all, mating needs to be random. So that means the alleles are mixed randomly when we look at the offspring. And finally, the population needs to be large so there's no genetic bottlenecks and this will reduce the effect of chance influencing the results of your Hardy-Weinberg equations. So let's take a look at a practice question next of all. Now if 98, so I'm just gonna underline 98 because we wanna pick out the key information in these maths questions, of 200 individuals in a population express the recessive phenotype. Now, if we're thinking recessive phenotype, I'm already thinking about homozygous recessive. And that's purely because the recessive phenotype can only be expressed in the homozygous condition. Now, what percentage of the population would you predict to be heterozygotes? Now, if they're homozygous recessive, that's the same as saying Q squared from our earlier equation. And heterozygote is gonna be two P Q from our earlier equation. Now let's write down the equation so far. So we've got P squared 
plus 2pq plus q squared equals 1. So we already know that q squared is 98 out of 200. So that's the same as saying 0 0.49 because 98 divided by 200 is 0 0.49. And if we use our gut feeling, 98 is just less than half of 200. So that makes sense. Now, we've got q squared. So what we need next is our other equation, which is p plus q equals 1. So what we will do is we'll square root our value for q squared, which is a homozygous recessive. So if we do 0.49 square rooted, that gives us 0 0.7. Now, we know p plus q has to equal 1. So it's got to be the remainder being p. So if we do 1 minus 0 0.7, that gives us 0 0.3. Now, we know the heterozygotes are 2pq. So if we plug into the equation 2 times 0 0.3 times 0 0.7, that will give us 0 0.42 of the population being heterozygote. But let's read the question carefully because it wants a percentage. So 0 0.42 out of 1 is 42%. And we get full marks for saying 42%. So let's just recap that then. So 98 divided by 200 is q squared, which means 0 0.49 is q squared, which means 0 0.7 is q. p plus q equals 1. So 1 minus our value for q, which was 0 0.7, leaves us with 0 0.3. So 2pq is 2 times 0 0.3 times 0 0.7, which just gives us 0 0.42 or 42% heterozygote. Now guys, I want you to have a go at this question on your own next. So pause the video, pick out the key information and take a look at it. So let's see if you've picked out the right information. So did you find we had an original population of 200, hit by a tidal wave, 100 are wiped out, leaving 36 homozygous recessive. So remember homozygous is Q squared out of the 100 survivors. If we assume that all individuals were equally likely to be wiped out, how did the tidal wave affect the frequencies then? So let's go through the answer next of all. Now, we know 36 out of 100 are homozygous recessive. So that's the same as saying 0 0.36. So that's Q squared. Next of all, if we square root that, we'll get Q, which would be 0 0.6 because 36 square rooted is 0 0.6. We know that P plus Q equals 1. So if we take 0 0.6 from 1, that will give us 0 0.4. So we therefore can work out the heterozygous population, which would be 2 times our value for P, which is 0 0.4, times our value for Q, which is 0 0.6. And that gives us 48% heterozygous. And then homozygous dominant would simply be our value for p squared, which would be 0 0.4 times 0 0.4, and that gives us 0 0.16 or 16% homozygous dominant. So we could then go on to explain whether the homozygous dominant or recessive or heterozygous increased or decreased to fully answer the question. Let's have another go at a question next then, guys. So let's say that brown fur colouring is dominant to grey fur colouring in mice. If you have 168 brown mice in a population of 200 mice, what is the predicted frequency of homozygous dominance, heterozygotes, and homozygous recessive? So pause the video and we'll break down the question. Okay then guys, so we know brown fur is dominant to gray fur. So if we write our equation p squared plus 2pq plus q squared equals 1, now that means p squared will be brown and 2pq will also be brown. And therefore, if gray is the recessive one, that means q squared is going to be gray. Now we know 168 out of 200 are brown. So we can plug into our calculator 168 divided by 200 and that gives us 0 0.84. Now we're not sure how many homozygous dominant there are or how many heterozygotes there are. 
But what we can work out is the remainder from 1 will be q squared. So that leaves us with 0 0.16 as q squared. So then we can square root q. 0 0.16 square rooted is 0 0.4. Next of all, we can find our other equation, which is p plus q equals 1. Now, if we know q is 0 0.4, that means that p is 0 0.6. Now, if we want to find p squared, all we simply do is do 0 0.6 squared. Now that's going to give us 0 0.36. So out of the 0 0.84, we know 0 0.36 are homozygous dominant, aka p squared. So what we do next is we do 0.84 minus 0.36, and the remainder will be the heterozygotes. So if we plug that into the calculator, that is 0 0.4. Now, there's an alternate method you could use, which would be 2 times 0 0.6 times 0 0.4, which would also give you 0 0.48. So either method is mathematically sound. So let's go through the answer in a slightly different way. Well, we know we had 200 mice in total. 168 were brown, which gives us p squared plus 2pq. That means that 32 out of 200, if we take 168 from 200, that gives us 32, would have grey fur, which is q squared. We know that 0 0.16 is q squared then. So if we square root that, we get 0 0.4 for q. So then we take that from 1 to give us 0 0.6 for p, because we know that p plus q equals 1. That's one of the two key equations in Hardy-Weinberg. If we then do p squared, that will be 0 0.6 squared, which will give us 0 0.36. So we have 36% homozygous dominant. 2 times 0 0.4 times 0 0.6 gives us 0 0.48. So we know 48% are heterozygotes. And finally, Q squared we knew was 0 0.16. So 16% are homozygous recessive. Okay then, guys. I hope that's helped you improve your knowledge of the Hardy-Weinberg principle. Like, comment and subscribe if you got some benefit from this video and I will see you in the next one.